driving. Seems easy enough, right? You drive every day. How could it not be? Well, surprisingly enough, there is a lot that goes on behind the wheel, whether you are aware of it or not. That's what this video is all about, to make you aware of good driving habits and to steer you away from the bad ones. Let's start with you, the driver. Your attitude plays a huge role in how your day is going to unfold. If you have a bad attitude, it will make the workday miserable, not only for you, but for your coworkers and clients as well. Coming to work with a good attitude sets you up for a successful day behind the wheel. Not only should you have a good attitude, but you should be prepared for the day as well. Do you have everything you need? How about all the documentation? Is a fire extinguisher on the truck? How about spare fuses? Being prepared will not only make the day less stressful, but you'll be ready to handle any emergency that comes your way. Never operate a vehicle when tired or fatigued. We know you work long days, but that is no excuse to get behind the wheel while drowsy. Your time is valuable, and getting seven to eight hours of sleep at minimum will lead to you having a productive day. This next topic goes without saying, but we're going to say it anyway. Drugs and alcohol have no place in the workplace, especially behind the wheel. Arrive to work feeling alert and ready, not tired or under the influence. Always wear the proper uniform to work. Your appearance is a direct representation of the company, and we want to be represented in the best manner possible. If you ever have any questions about what is acceptable to wear, make sure to ask your supervisor. Don't just wear it. Before driving any vehicle, it's always a good idea to do a proper pre-trip inspection. This will allow you to find any potential issues before they arise on the road. Prior to getting in the vehicle, take a look around the vehicle. Check the windshield wipers, make sure they are in good condition. Look under the truck, check for leaks or other potential problems. One of the most critical parts of the inspection is the inflation, tread depth and general condition of the tires. Tread depth can be easily measured by observing tread wear bars or by using a tread depth gauge. If you do not have a tread depth gauge, use a penny to measure the remaining tread. If a part of Lincoln's head is covered, there is the minimum 230 seconds remaining. But remember, that's the bare minimum. Steer tires must have 430 seconds tread remaining. Make sure all of your fluids are filled to the proper levels. Fluids such as the oil are very important to the engine and need to be checked. When starting the vehicle, note warning lights and gauges. Check and adjust mirrors and headrests prior to moving the vehicle. Make sure the windows are completely clear of snow, ice and fog before starting to drive. When loading the truck, there are a few things you need to be aware of. First, make sure the back of the truck is clean and nothing can potentially get in your way. Organization is key. You don't want to arrive to a house and realize what you're delivering is actually blocked by other items. Plan your loads accordingly. Before moving any items into the truck, make sure you inspect it for damage. Make sure there are no scratches, cracks, rips, or anything of that nature. If you do find something wrong with an item, consult with your supervisor and do not load the item. The following safe lifting procedures are another important aspect of your job. These procedures include stand close to the load and center yourself over it with your feet shoulder width apart. Tighten your abdominal muscles. Keeping your back straight, bend your knees and squat down to the floor. Get a good grasp on the load with both hands. Keep the load close to your body and use your leg muscles to stand up, lifting the load off the floor. Your back should remain straight throughout lifting, using only your leg muscles to lift the load. Do not twist your body when moving the load. Turn your feet in the direction of travel. Place the load in the appropriate spot, again bending your knees and using your leg muscles. 
Following these procedures will keep you out of harm's way, not to mention save your back. First things first, always wear your seatbelt. Wearing a seatbelt is the single most important thing you can do to protect yourself in the event of a crash. Next, obey all posted speed limits at all times. If the sign says 55, how fast should you be traveling? Obvious, right? Not necessarily. In inclement weather such as rain, snow, or fog, the posted speed limit may not be safe. Slow down in inclement weather, and when the sun's out, do the speed limit. Increase the following distance for each of the following conditions. Adverse weather conditions, heavy traffic, following a truck, night driving or poor visibility, being tailgated, driving while stressed or fatigued. Plain and simple, leave more cushion and slow down. Remember, your vehicle has areas called blind spots you cannot see without properly adjusted mirrors. Adjust your mirrors before you start your car and be aware of your blind spot at all times. You should keep your eyes moving and scan your mirrors approximately every 5 to 10 seconds to keep a constantly updated picture of what's going on around you. Intersections are responsible for over 50% of all accidents. When approaching intersections, scan to the left, then to the right, and back to the left for vehicles that may have run a stop sign or a light or for pedestrians or bicyclists. Backup accidents are preventable. Adjust mirror properly and be aware of the sun or shadows that could impair your visibility. If you are alone, get out of the truck and check the proposed parking spot. If your truck does not have a backup anti-collision sound, it's a good idea to sound two short honks before backing up. Avoid backing up if possible and never back up into oncoming traffic. Most importantly, your helper has to guide you. Taking in consideration all angles of the truck from top to bottom, look out for children, branches, low-hanging power lines, sidewalks, overhanging buildings, bikes, and people. Distracted driving. Who amongst us hasn't experienced this? Our lives are busy, time is short, and we spend a great deal of it in our vehicles, rushing from one place to another. Many of us have jobs that require long hours behind the wheel, not to mention long commutes to and from work. Added to that are the miles log taking care of our families and personal business, filling up the evenings and weekends. All of this time spent behind the wheel requires your full attention to the road, nothing else. It is easy to become distracted when driving. How about quickly trying to read that text that you just received? Seems harmless enough. What can it hurt? I mean, it only takes a few seconds, right? What could happen in a few seconds? This could and did. Was it worth it? We're all aware that talking and driving has been deemed unsafe. But know this. Texting and driving is actually more dangerous than talking on the phone while driving. Why put yourself or others at risk? CDs, MP3 players, radios, air conditioning, heater, great modern conveniences that make your ride more enjoyable, but they can be distractions that take your attention off the task at hand, driving, and compromise your safety and the safety of those who share the road with you. You may be very familiar with the controls on your radio or CD player, but it's a good idea to set these items as well as other devices like climate control knobs and mirrors prior to beginning your trip. Taking your eyes off the road to adjust these devices can be a distraction that puts you in harm's way. Never try and read a work order while driving. Never try and read anything while driving. Wait until you are stopped. You can avoid collisions. We all want to be safe on the road. Control distractions or let distractions control you. It's your choice. Make the safe one. Always treat the customer with respect. Show up with a smile and good attitude. When you greet the customer, let them know who you are and always be polite find out where they would like the item to be placed. 
Before you unload the item out of the truck, pre-plan a route. Note any obstacles that you might come into contact with. When delivering to a house or apartment that has stairs, take extra care when planning out your route. The rules that apply to loading the truck apply to unloading the truck as well. Be gentle when unloading. You do not want to damage the item. Also, remember those lifting rules we talked about earlier? Make sure to apply them here as well. Policies and procedures vary from company to company, so make sure you check with your supervisor regarding specific details that may pertain to your delivery. There is no way that we can cover everything about driving in this short video. This just scratches the surface, and it's up to you to use common sense and good judgment every day. Remember, make safety a part of your workday. Thank you for watching.